Rick, a couple of big announcements from True Blue Power recently dealing with STCs for several different aircraft types. So let's let's talk about first of all the STCs, and then we'll talk about how you got there. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, this is a natural evolution of our uh, being in the lithium-ion battery business. Obviously, you want to get them flying on aircraft. Our initial focus has been on OEMs, which we have a lot of activity going on with OEMs. Have been publicly talked about. Some haven't. But the SCCs were really a, a gateway to get uh, batteries on airplanes and flying. We, we get questions every day from people going, I really want this technology. They understand the value. So the SCC was a great way to approach that. And you mentioned that people are asking to put your batteries on their airplanes. What is the advantage to coming to an aftermarket battery like you have here at True Blue Power against what might be the OEM battery on the aircraft? Well, it's, it's a long list of things. You know, initially the first thing people talk about is the power to weight ratio, basically three to one for this technology. Um, when you talk about weight, our initial idea was that for carriers that uh, might be running freight, gives them the opportunity to do a little more freight. We have people that are running small airline operations in Central America, might let them get a child on board. You know, when you're talking about two TB44s, you're going to gain 100 pounds. And then we've also found that, especially in the caravan, there are some special missions work. People in special missions are always trying to add more payload, center gravity, let alone the other advantages, which we talk about a lot, which are more tangible, a longer maintenance cycle, replacement less often, high power on engine starts, cooler engine starts. There's just a long list of advantages. When you add them up, it's just a compelling reason. And we're interestingly finding that, that it means different things to different operators, depending on what their mission is. We talk about with these STCs about these batteries now being main ship batteries. Explain what is a main ship battery. Well, there are a lot of batteries on aircraft, and it's kind of a generic term that denotes typically a main ship battery is one that's going to be used for either an engine start or maybe an APU start that then starts the engines. But typically they're going to require the, the highest capacity, the most energy for power. We also make emergency batteries. These batteries are very utilitarian. They can be used for a lot of things. Beyond the main ship where we're starting engines or APUs, we have applications and special missions where the batteries are not connected to the aircraft bus, the power bus, but they're powering, for example, monitoring equipment or potentially a gun or medical equipment or those sorts of things. So main ship, um, it's just kind of a generic term, but the batteries are very universal. There's been a lot of news about lithium-ion batteries recently. Take us through a little bit of the STC process that the FAA has because there has been some safety concerns with these types of batteries. Absolutely. We're, we talk about the fact that we're evangelists for the technology. We're the first ones to proclaim, but you have to design it correctly, you have to manage it correctly, and you really need to certify it. You can go to um, certain air shows and there will be people selling you lithium ion batteries and they're just cells strapped together. We talk about monitoring, managing, mitigating and containing. It's the same technology but what that STC process does is validates the certification and in fact we also have TSO. TSO validates the design of the battery and we've had those for about two years. So the FAA has said, we validate that your design meets our requirements. Now we want to put it on an aircraft, so we have to go through a supplemental type certification, which is on that particular aircraft, what's the installation? What's the weight? You have to look at all the loads. You have to do those things. On the caravan, uh, part of that is you have to do an engine stop in the air twice and restart. This is a process that gives the FAA the confidence and the owners the confidence that, yes, that even in the worst scenario condition, which would be a thermal runaway, we manage it appropriately so that there's no risk or damage to anything surrounding, anything in the airplane, any body in the airplane. So we embrace it and there are actually special conditions put out by the FAA until it becomes a little more accepted. But every day we fly, I think is another day proving that we've done it the right way. Well, Rick, it may not be the sexiest thing on the airplane, and sometimes it just hides out of the way, and you don't think about it until you have to have it. But it's a very important component to, to, to aviation. Yeah, you asked the wrong guy. I think it's pretty sexy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for taking some time to talk to us on Aero Thank TV. Thank you very much. Aero TV is brought to you by...
The True Blue Power TA202 series high power USB charging port requires no bulky external power converters for 10 to 32 VDC installation. The in-seat cabin and cockpit power source delivers all the power you need in a small, economical, easy to install package. Available from your local avionics dealer.